Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams again. And my goal in this video is to make you confident about confidence intervals. Really, I just want to explain what they are, how they work, and hopefully from then, from there, you'll be able to become the champion of confidence intervals. Let's see what we got. All right. You'll remember that at some point in one of my previous videos, we had a sample of bulldog puppies. And from that sample, we calculated, we weighed them all, we came up with the average weight and created a point estimate. That was Mr. That was our little puppy sample me. And he weighed 10 pounds. And with the use of confidence intervals and point estimates, he is so cute that we can use him or her to estimate the average weight of every bulldog in the world. In other words, draw the sample, calculate a point estimate, which could be a proportion, an average, and then use it to estimate the average weight of every bulldog pu puppy in the entire world. Well, how the heck do we do that? going to show you right now. Remember we said that the central limit theorem told us that if we either had a normally distributed population or sufficient sample size that we could use our friend the normal curve to make inferences or to draw conclusions about populations from samples. Well, that's how we're going to create these confidence intervals. We're going to use our little friend over here, sample mean, our little sample mean puppy. And we're going to use his weight in this formula as X bar. Because what we're saying is, is that X bar is a pretty good approximation of the mean weight or the average weight of this distribution except instead of being spot on I want you to give me a little bit of wiggle room and when I say wiggle room I want you to be able to let me be within a given percentage below or above the true value of the mean because I don't want you to hold me to an exact number well, how do we deal with not holding me to an exact number? We create a confidence interval. And that confidence interval, interval is simply going to be a range of values on the normal curve within which we believe the true average weight of all of these puppies is going to fall. In other words, the mean is going to be sample mean minus some amount and sample mean above or plus some amount. How do we determine how do we determine then these x values on the curve? Well, it's all driven by how close you want me to get to being right. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell you I can be right and I can feel confident, confidence intervals, in my response or in my estimation that the true mean falls within this interval based on the sample mean, which was this little guy right up here, based on our sample mean, within a given confidence level, sometimes we can almost think of this in terms of margin of error. So, what the heck is Z alpha A2, Z alpha divided by 2, all of this stuff here. Let me walk you through real quick what we're talking about in that part of our formula. Let's 
let's talk first about a 99% confidence interval. When I deal with a 99% confidence interval, I'm simply going to take my mean, my sample mean, and I'm going to give myself a range. And what I'm going to say is, at the 99% confidence interval, I am 99% certain, right? I'm 99% certain that the mean or mu of the weight of all of the dogs in the world fall between this upper and this lower value of my, of my interval. Well, that means a 1% chance that I'm wrong, isn't it? Because 99% right is the same thing as saying 1% wrong. Well, if there's a 1% chance that I'm wrong, you know that this normal curve is a mirror image of itself, which means I can be wrong on both ends of the curve. I can be wrong high or low. So at a 99% confidence interval, a 99% confidence interval, there's a 99% probability that the true mean of the population of puppy weights falls in this area and a 1% chance that I'm wrong and we just said I can be wrong on both ends, high or low, then what do we also know? We also know that with that 99% confidence interval, 1% chance of being wrong, that half of my wrong answers and the other half of my wrong answers are going to fall respectively in the lower and the upper end of the curve. Z alpha divided by 2. Alpha being the area in the tail. Remember the little fish has a tail? So alpha, right, my little fish, means the tail. Why do I take it? Divided by 2. Curve has two tails, doesn't it? So in my 99% confidence interval, what I'm really saying is the Z value associated with 99% of the data, the Z value, not Z equals 99, but the Z value associated with the points on the curve within which 99% of the data will fall and alpha divided by 2, in this case 1%, divided by 2 means that in this area of the curve and this area of the curve I'm going to have 1% 0 0.01 divided by 2 is going to tell me that I have 0 0.005 percent of my data in each end of the curve because 0 0.005 divided by times 2 is going to be my 1% split between the two tails 99% here because the one thing we also know is that every single curve is going to add up to 1 